Jesus is the only way. So we're not talking about oneness of every way goes to God. We're talking about being one in the body. Out of Ephesians chapter 4, one body, one spirit, one Father, one Christ and Lord, one hope of our calling. And this month we're looking specifically at one body, the fierceness of the church. The fierceness of the church. Thank you, Lord. The church is fierce. The church is fierce. The world is frightened by the church. The world is frightened by the church. And let me tell you, there's going to be things coming up against the church. It's always a church. People want to come and attack the church. Attack the church. Attack. Even in times like these, I, I mentioned to a few of you, we've been praying over the past uh, few weeks for some of our friends that are pastors in Canada, which actually some um, uh, church persecution websites are now adding uh, regions in Canada to the persecuted church list. Can you believe that? persecuted church. The church is going underground. I know in Manitoba, the church has gone underground. Churches are meeting in barns. They're meeting in in basements. They cannot meet in public anymore. One of our friends is a pastor in New Brunswick, uh, cold area, and he was arrested. We prayed for him. He was arrested a few weeks back. Then he was let out, and um, they weren't allowed to congregate in a building anymore. So in New Brunswick, cold, cold, northeast, uh, they opened a tent and they were having church outside. And hundreds and hundreds of people are coming. They're baptizing people. Church is going on outside. They're preaching outside. People are coming in with their cars, cracking the window to hear the message. And every week, he wrote it uh, the other day on Facebook, every week he said public safety is coming to the church. And last Friday, there was an issue to arrest him again. He was to be fined five thousand. Uh, he was to be fined thirty thousand dollars. His wife five thousand dollars. The youth minister five thousand. The children's pastor five thousand. And the church was to be fined thirty thousand dollars. Why? They took record because when they met together, they would say hello to each other in close proximity, fist bump each other. They were happy. You can't be happy. You can't be happy. Do you remember? Do you remember? It was last week or two weeks ago what we shared. What was happening? One of the rules uh, that one of the provinces in Canada had had listed: if you go to church, you can, when you worship God, you can no longer stand. You could only sit. You could only sit. So we look and we say, church. Let me tell you, everything happening in this world is not about a sickness going around this world. It's about the struggle of this. The fight that we're fighting. Remember, Paul says that in Ephesians, actually, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 is where we're looking at our theme. But when you get to Ephesians chapter 6, we did that when we talked about the full armor of God. Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers in high places. So we know that there is an attack on the church, but because there's an attack on the church, it's still the truth that there's a fierceness in the church. Why is the world coming against the church? Because the church is fierce. The church has the living, resurrected power of God inside of it. There's a, an aliveness, a spirit of power in the church. That spirit is the same spirit that God said He raised Jesus from the dead that now lives inside of us. And that spirit of God is roaming in us, filling us, moving us, bringing us from place to place. And we need to realize before anything else that there is fierceness in the church. We have the living God living inside of us, through us, in every aspect of our life. Listen, we don't serve a weak God and we don't live a weak Christianity. There is fierceness in the church. So, last week we were looking at fierceness of the church outwardly. This week we're looking at the fierceness of the church outwardly again. Next week, the next two weeks we're going to look at the fierceness of the church inwardly. But now we're looking at what the church does outwardly, alright? Turn with me, if you will, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. <clears throat> these are so good. I love these verses because... oh. What tough times you live in. Acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 3. Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death. Do you know what he's talking about there? Do you remember who they were looking to put to death? Stephen. This is the first martyr. Stephen. They were going to kill Stephen. So Saul was there in hearty agreement with putting him to death. And on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria 
except the apostles. <clears throat> Some devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul began ravaging the church, entering house after house, and dragging off men and women, he would put them in prison. Let me tell you, it's not, we're not too far. We're not too far from obviously not being able to do things in society. We're not that far from our homes being marked, our homes being invaded. So what crazy three verses? Now, go with me to the next chapter, chapter 9, verse 31. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace, being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it continued to increase. Thank you, Lord. Listen, that, that, um, that verse 31 actually is right in context with chapter 8, the first three verses. The only thing that transpired between that is Saul converting to become a believer. Saul stopped his pursuit, but the pursuit against Christians did not stop. So in chapter 8, the church takes off because it's being persecuted. In chapter 9, the church is still persecuted, but it's enjoying peace, comfort, power, and increase. How awesome is that? Look at that quote on your page. Even though the church was forced to scatter, the scattering did not disrupt God's plan. Thank you, Lord. Even though the church was forced to scatter, the scattering did not disrupt God's plan. I love that because we can really put this into context of our life right now. Aren't there a lot of things that seem to be, oh, so up in arms? All of these things, nothing, the scattering did not disrupt God's plans. It may disrupt our plans. You see that? Isn't that true? It may disrupt our plans. But for God, it only extends His plans. What's happening today does not disrupt God's plans. If anything, it disrupts our plans. But not God's plans. It only extends God's plans. Thank you, Lord. Before we even get into this, I, I, I need to set a little bit of this context here. Acts, it says on your page, Acts chapter 8, verse 1. One event initiated a terrible season of persecution for the church. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. One event. Do you know what that one event was? We just read it, Acts chapter 8, verse 1. <clears throat> yes, Stephen being killed. One event shifted everything for the church. One event. One event today shifted everything for the church. One event. Their stability of societal life shifted overnight. What do I mean their, their, their societal life? Acts, Acts chapter 2 talks about what happened to the church. The church always met together every day. They were in each other's home. They were enjoying food. They were enjoying the apostles' teaching. They were enjoying prayer with one another. They were rejoicing all the time. They had this freedom to connect. They had this freedom to grow, to do what the church felt that they needed to do was to be outward and active in the community. And one event all of a sudden stops all of that. Stephen is killed, and now the church is gone. Overnight. The church went from meeting every day, celebrating those are Christians, to all of a sudden, gone. Acts chapter 9, 1 through 30, we're not going to read those, Acts chapter 9, 1 through 30, during these terrible transitions, we must pray for the salvation of those who are actively against the church. Amen. Amen. I love that. During that time, the only thing that shifted chapter 9 up to from verse 1 through 30 is the conversion of Saul. One leader, 
one wicked person, one evil man who was saw, who was seeking to kill the church, to destroy the church. One man is converted, and then what happens? I want you to fill in this little quote here. It says, "Salvation will make our enemies become our greatest advocates." Salvation will make our enemies become our greatest advocates. And that's what we need. Let me tell you, we need to look up this morning. Look up into this world. There's going to be people, I believe it strongly, people in position, political positions, that will find Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden will advocate for the church. Let it be. Amen. So be it. So be it this morning. So be it. The fierceness of the church. So here the church was. I want to focus this morning on chapter 9, verse 31, because there is something strong here that I am seeing the more time I'm spending with the Lord. Number one on your page. Only through the connection, only through the connection of one body can we enjoy peace, growth, comfort, and presence. Only through the connection of one body can we enjoy peace, growth, comfort, and presence. I want you to, if you mark your Bibles, look at verse 31. You're going to mark certain pieces of verse 31. The very first three words of verse 31 says, So the church. So the church. That is so important. Before we even, we even mix into that, how many of you can say you want some of these things? How many of you want peace? Real peace. I mean peace. Come on. Peace. Comfort. Okay. Growth. How many of you want the active presence of God in every moment of your life? Verse 31 says, So the church... These aspects of, of what God was giving happened through the connection of the church. Now obviously God will meet us individually. God will meet us in our homes. He'll meet us when we're, when we're alone, when we're struggling. But through the connection of the church, through this one body, the fierceness of the church together, there was growing. It was connection of the church that enjoyed the best of what people were searching for so the church, remember, it's the church that was, that was attacked. I love this because we're all individual people, but it's the church that's being attacked. We're all individuals, but it's the gathering together of the church, the unity of the church together, the group of the church together that's being attacked, that's being pushed out, that's being ostracized. And here it is, not only is the, was the church suppressed, the church was persecuted, the church scattered, but in 31, the church together is the one who enjoyed the touch of God within its walls. Enjoyed the presence of God within its walls. Look at those words, we're going to look at those words again, that first one that he gives the church, through the church, the church enjoyed peace. And peace means what? The ability to handle the situations of life. To handle the situations of life. Let me tell you, it is hard to handle the situations of life. But through the church, through the connection together, they were able to handle. And that's such an interesting word. That's not one of those words like, when you read words like that, they enjoyed peace. Don't take it as just like, they were happy. You understand what was happening to them. Their lives were marked. They were, they were sought out to be killed by the Jewish community. They were sought out to be killed by the Roman community. They were sought out, hunted, murdered in wicked ways. And it says that God gave them peace. God gave them peace. Turn your page over. That next one, growth. Growth. So it says they enjoyed peace. And that word growth, actually, I, I combine these three. It says being built up. The church was being built up. So growth is this, actually advancing. Actually advancing, considering the world system. Actually advancing, considering the world system. Oh, advancing, considering the world system. What does that mean? Listen, you're a believer in Jesus, you're connected to His body, God will advance you in the craziness of the system of the world. 
This world wants to limit everything that's happening, right? Wants to limit what we could do, limit what we're uh, allowed to do. No, no, no. The church was growing. They were being built up. They were advancing considering the world system. Look at that next one there. The fear of the Lord. <clears throat> they were being built up and they were going on. They were going on in the fear of the Lord. God's presence. God's presence was daily active. God's presence was daily active. Actually, I, I want to even take that word away, daily. I don't want to use the word... Uh, I tried writing it down here at one point. I wanted to write, God was working uh, minutely, but if you write minutely, it's actually minutely. God was not working minutely. God is working minute by minute. He is working second by second in our lives. He is working moment by moment. And the church, all of a sudden, because of the pressure, you see, because of the pressure that was resting on them, the church had abandoned themselves to God's presence and God's presence alone was leading them. God's presence alone was guiding them. God's presence alone. I I can't imagine what what this was like because they were still connected to this world. They were connected to the the government system. They were connected to their society. But all of a sudden, because of the pressure that was put on them, the government and their religious society put a stop to everything happening in their life. And the church no longer had any more connection outward. Their only connection was each other. And God was moving them along. Oh, thank you, Lord. Maybe so many of these things around us are happening, so God, we can look to God only and say, Oh, God, from you alone is my help. From you alone do I trust. You alone do I seek. You alone do I put my hope and life into. And God's Spirit will lead us moment by moment, daily, active in their life. The fear of the Lord. God's presence was daily active. And that other one there, comfort. I love that he writes the word comfort. Comfort of the Holy Spirit. Why did they need to be comforted? Oh, because it's hard. There's difficulty there. There were deaths. There were frustrations. There were fears. And yet they were enjoying peace, the movement of the Holy Spirit, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The comfort of the Holy Spirit. His grace, this is, this is, this is what I've come to determine what comfort is. His grace made sense of each trying situation. His grace made sense, right? If we, if, we, if we would imagine we're going through what we're going through and all of a sudden we're praying and we say, Oh Lord, why is this stuff here? Why are we going through this? And God opened the, opened the ceiling, right? And He stood before us and He said, Oh, just a little while longer. What I'm doing actually, I'm setting up all these things. All these big kingdoms that have r- risen up against each other, they are ready to crumble. I have my plan. Would we be afraid anymore? We would look out and say, Oh, all right. Yeah, okay. Everybody's getting sick. Don't worry about it. God is doing something. But He is doing something. God is moving. That's the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The comfort of the Holy Spirit says, I know what I'm doing. And you can trust in me for what I'm doing. His grace made sense of each trying situation. So here we were. Only through the connection of the body can we enjoy this. Now, look at number two. This is so cool here. It is through, number two, it is through the oneness, not of the church, the oneness of the body of Christ. It is through the oneness of the body of Christ that we are overshadowed. That we are overshadowed. That we are overshadowed. With the awe of God. And the personal and active presence of the Holy Spirit. That verse is so important. It is through the oneness of the body of Christ that we are overshadowed. That we are overshadowed. Verse 31c, it says, They were going on in the fear of the Lord, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They were going on in the fear of their Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You can mark those three words. They were going on in. 
they were going on in or they were continuing in. Their, their movement, their breath of life became only the presence of God. It is through the oneness of the body of Christ that we are overshadowed with awe. We are overshadowed with awe. They were going on in the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The church provided the institution of endurance. The church provided the institution of endurance. Through the church, they were able to endure. They were able to endure. I love that. Through the church, they were able to endure. Look what it says here. The fear of the Lord and comfort of the Holy Spirit were avenues. The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit were avenues of movement for the progression of the church. The fear of the Lord, the comfort of the Holy Spirit were avenues where the church was able to make it through and say, okay, I can breathe because I am a part of something greater. I can breathe because I am a part of something stronger. That was through the church. Through the church, we need the body together. We need the body together. We need prayer together. We need time together. We need encouragement together. We need to be with each other. We need to be with each other. If we are the church, we are in line with the movement of His presence. His presence will move us. His presence will move us and provide for us. So His presence will move us and provide for us as long as we remain in His vessel. His presence will move us, provide us as long as we stay connected. As long as we stay connected in His vessel. Uh, I don't know how many, how many of you guys have seen... Uh, I like it. I've grown to not like it. How many of you guys have seen that Disney uh, movie, uh, Finding Nemo? You remember that one? Okay. Finding Nemo is about a poor little fish that got lost in the sea, and then they're trying to find him. The fish makes it to a part of Australia, and there is this one thing that they mention there, a highway in the, in the waters called the EAC. The East Australian Current. Actually, it's not just a movie thing. That's really a real current. The East Australian Current, which goes, uh, which borders the eastern part of Australia and goes all along the coast of Australia down through uh, the coast of New Zealand. That's only one uh, one current. The world, our world, is full of currents. Every every continent has uh, certain currents, they all have different names, but that one's the EAC, uh, has different names of currents that move through. Do you know what the purpose of those currents are? Any stab? Move the boats? Move the boats? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the currents are actually really amazing. In the movie, uh, fish and turtles used it to coast, you know, used it as highways. And uh, the movie actually wasn't really that far off. Uh, sea turtles uh, do use the East Australian Current to get into it and have an easy traveling down the coast of Australia uh, into other waters. But the purpose of the, of the, the currents, I, I wrote it down here, it was really quite marvelous. The EAC acts, as a, acts to transport tropical marine fauna and marine life to habitats in subtropical regions. The current also warms up the eastern coastline of the country. Now look what else it does. The EAC transfers heat from the tropics of the mid-latitude water and atmosphere. It does this by producing warm core eddies, which allow the Tasman Sea to have large biodiversity. So what it does is the current starts to stir up and make eddies in the water, starts to uh, churn the water. And when it starts churning the water, it takes all of the nutrients that are at the bottom of the ocean and it bursts those into the ocean so all the marine life are able to be sustained. God created this world in such a phenomenal way. He put everything they need in the oceans. There has to be a way it gets to the creatures. He creates the currents, and God says, no, no, 
I have everything under control. And those currents stir the waters, bring all those nutrients up into the water, and all the fish thrive. They come and they go in and out of those currents so that they can be sustained. Those are some of the richest places of marine life and biodiversity in those currents. If we stay in the current, we will be fed. We will be sustained. Because it's through the body of Christ that God is churning the waters. It's through the church that God is moving. That God is, is building and building and building. And, and through the church that life is being breathed into this world. I, I keep telling you, church, if you, if you need books to read, I can give you books to read. Fill yourselves with, with description after description. Fill yourselves with story after story of people doing the work of God. You'll be encouraged. But every time there's a church planted, a church developed, life comes into that area. Life comes into that area. It is the working of God in this world. Now, if we stay connected to this church, connected to the church. So here was happened, right? The church was persecuted, the church scattered. The church scattered, but the church didn't stop. People think that when the church scattered, it meant that the church, every individual went different directions. That's not what happened. The church scattered. Actually, a lot of the churches, they said, we don't want to stay here. Uh, We read that in the first uh, three verses of Acts chapter 8. The church didn't want to stay where they were. The church as itself scattered out. They broke out into branches and said, we're going to go. Instead of being one church here, we're going to plant churches everywhere we go. And actually, there was still a church in Jerusalem because the apostles stayed there. The apostles stayed in Jerusalem. They were staying in that center. So the church burst out and formed groups in all the regions. And life was being birthed there. The Holy Spirit pushed them out and filled them, surrounded them. And so here it is. In, through the church, they were being overshadowed with awe. There was movement. There was provision. They were remaining in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the fear of the Lord. I love that word, the fear of the Lord. They were going on in the fear of the Lord. That's, you know that's not fear like, oh my God, I'm scared. It's fear of like, God was moving in such tangible ways that they were in awe all the time. They could see His hand moving. They could see His hand moving. Now, this last one here, number three on our page, it's quite simple. Through the bod- through one body, we are destined for increase. Through the one body, we are destined for increase. Now what does that mean? It says here at the end of verse 31, it continued to increase. Let's read that verse in context. So the church throughout Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoy peace being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it continued to increase. So many people believe that word specifically means that the church kept growing in number, but that's not necessarily so, because it was a, a dangerous state. Well, the church continued in number as it split, but it was a dangerous thing to be one big group. The church was increasing. What were they increasing in? They were increasing in peace. They were increasing in comfort. They were increasing in the awe of God, the working of God, the movement of God. They were increasing. They were deepening. They were growing deeper and deeper and deeper as they were yielding themselves to God. And it continued to increase. It continued to increase. God continued to move. And the church was open to the movement of God. And that's where the fierceness of the church lies, is that we have the active, living presence of God in and through us. We have the active and living presence of God flowing through us, flowing through our situations, flowing through our lives. They were going on in the fear of the Lord, in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and it continued to increase. It continued to, what? It continued to increase. The church. The church was growing. There's a word. Have we become deeper? Have we become deeper? Have we become deeper? Have we become more afraid? More paranoid? More unsettled? More uncertain, right? More, I don't know if I should 
tough to say. I don't know if I should hug them, touch them. Oh Lord, that God would help us. Let me tell you, it's the touch of the church that makes a difference. Not fear of this world, but the touch of the church. The touch of the church. I remember my first, my first trip to, to Africa. I was in a service, and I had never been really around any difficult thing, sickness-wise. And th- we did this open-air crusade, and this one father came up to me in the dark, and he had a little boy in his arms, and he held that boy in his arms, and that boy's legs were dropped his arms were dropped to his side. He was just small, tiny, skeletal. And he came and he put that boy, he told me to open my hands, and he put that little boy in my hands. And he said to me, he's dying of tuberculosis. <sighs> I want to drop that boy. <laughs> tuberculosis? He put that boy in my hands. I, I said, oh Lord, it's the touch of your church, the touch of your people. We prayed. God raised that boy. Fever left and God raised that boy. God does things like that. And here we're in a place now where there's a fear for us to even be around each other. The fierceness of the church is here. The power of the church is here. The presence of God is here. The anointing of God is here. Amen. The church must be the church because of the power that's in the church. You need the power of God in your life. I need the power of God in my life. I need the power of God in healing, the power of God in deliverance, the power of God in His movement to be able to wake in the morning. Oh, it's been the past few few days I've been waking in the morning and My mind, I open my eyes and I've been singing, God, you are good, you are good to me. There is a movement that happens when you give yourself to God. When you give yourself to the movement of the church and say, God, I need only you. Not not blessing in this society, not clearance in the world around me, but I need the depth of your presence. I need only to wake in the morning and say, it's you, God. To live with my breath during the day and say, it's because of you. To rest my head at night and say, God, it is only you in this world. And that fierceness inside of you will rise up as a lion will rise up inside of you and will say, no matter what goes on, no matter what pushes you, we have one in our midst that has already conquered. One in our midst that has been raised from the dead. One in our midst that's alive at the right hand of God. One in our midst that is our warrior, our king, our fighter, our blessing, our life and our breath. One in our midst that is our conquering, soon coming, redeeming King who has prepared a place for us and says everything is alright because He has already conquered. Everything is alright because He has already conquered. Hallelujah. Oh, we forget. We forget who we serve. We forget who is our King. We forget who is in control. Huh. Oh Lord, oh Lord, the attacks came and the church grew because Jesus was the presence in the church. Jesus was the presence in the church. So be it, Lord. So be it, Lord. So be it, Lord. So be it, God. So be it, Lord, this morning. So be it, God, this morning. So be it, God, this morning. morning. We have been consumed, oh God. Oh Lord, we recognize that spirit. Oh, you spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. We bind you. We cast you out. You have no place in the church. You have no place in the church. There's no place in the church for you. Oh, we have a, we have a greater king. We have a greater redeemer. We have a greater redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh Lord, 
Thank you, Lord, for what you've instilled in us, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, Jesus, would you fill us this morning, God, with fullness of your presence. Oh, Lord, I ask you for this word, this word, this verse to be made manifest in us, God. Oh, Lord, increase in us the awe of your presence. Increase in us, God, the fear of the Lord. Increase in us, God, the fear of God. Increase in us, Lord, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The comfort of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, increase in us this morning as we turn our attention to you. Oh, Lord, let it be. Let it be, oh, Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, this morning that you would allow each one of us to walk. Oh, give us that picture, God, inside of us. Lord, give us that picture of our soul, of our spirit, God, roaring as a lion, God. Help us to walk understanding that we have the fierceness of you inside of us, God. Oh, Lord, that everything we touch, oh, God, that we can speak even to death and command it to come to life. Oh, God, fill it in us, I pray. God, help us to see the fierceness that's inside of us. Help us to see, God, that all these things of the world, you said of God, that signs and wonders would follow them that believe. God, show us, God. Show us, God. Lord, as we command from our mouth that these things break, as we command from our mouth, God, that sicknesses go, as we command, God, from our mouth that we speak life, God, life and life abundantly. Oh, Lord. Let it be inside of us. The fierceness, God, of this church. The fierceness of Your presence, God, that You even declared that You will build Your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Yes, Lord. Surround us this morning, God. Surround us this morning, God, that we would be full of You. Full of Your presence. Full of Your leading, O God. O Lord, give us the words to command Give us the words to command this morning, God. Lord, we speak even to the situations of our home. Give us the words to speak as we speak it out of the fierceness of Your Word, God. Oh Lord, You have destined us for life and not for death. You have destined us, God, for for prosperity, God, for growth, for anointing, Lord. And not for fear. Not for suppression, God. But Lord, you've increased us for this moment. And Lord, our solace is you that you've declared over us that in these days you will pour out your Spirit over all flesh, O God. I pray, God, as we think and dwell on the fierceness of the church, that you would release over us dreams and visions, God. That you would release over us words of prophecy, Lord. O God, I pray, show us visions, O God. Lord, Anoint us in this time. Anoint us in these moments, Lord, that we don't be moved by fear, that we are not moved by anxiety, that we are not moved even by death, O Lord. Lord, let it be our resolve that for us to live is You, God, and even to die is gain. O Lord, increase in us, I pray, Jesus, as we yield ourselves and give ourselves to You. Oh Lord, release your pattern into our life. Release your pattern into our life. Oh, I believe, I, 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 I can sense that God is already speaking it over us. There's some of us, there's, there are things in your home, things in your family, things in your life you, that you have not spoken out against because you fear Speak out those things in the name of Jesus. You have fierceness inside of you. For the Spirit of God rests in your heart, in your mouth, through your hands. Oh Lord, I pray that you push us, God, even even today and even forward from here, God, to lay hands on the sick. God, to speak words to the depressed, to those that are down, to those that are addicted. Oh Lord, that we speak in the name of Jesus 
from your presence, from your throne room, O God. O Lord, and we don't pray these things alone because your word says that not only do we have confidence to approach you, Jesus, at your throne, but you are already at the right hand of God interceding for us. You're praying these things already, God. And Lord, we join with you in prayer, Jesus, that what we speak on earth will be already loosed in heaven and bound, God, in this realm, Jesus. We bind the work of the devil and release the movement of your spirit. Oh Lord, let it be over us. Let it be over us as we make this confession this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we sang those words. All your promises are yes and amen. So be it, O God. So be it. Lord, we speak this word into our life. Jesus, that the church enjoyed peace, growth, comfort. Oh, God, comfort in the Holy Spirit. We speak a sounding amen. So be it, God. So be it, God. So be it in us. So be it in us. Prosper us in this land of struggle. Prosper us in this land, God, of, of censorship. Prosper us, God, as everyone's trying to close the mouth of believers. Lord, grow us, God. Grow us into a mighty Lord force, showing your word in signs and wonders. Release it, O oh God, over this body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, release it in us. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I can see it. God, show me. I can see it. I can see it. Some of you this week, you need to lay hands on people. There's going to be healing this week, deliverance this week. There's going to be some freedom in the things of your family. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Step out in the fierceness of the church. Step out in the fierceness of what God has placed inside of you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let it be, Lord. Let it be, Lord. Let it be, Lord. Let it be, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We speak it in the name of Jesus. We speak it in the name of Jesus. We speak it in the name of Jesus. Lord, the words of life are going to cause a, a, a change to happen in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brian, the Lord is showing me. God, you need to speak that out this week. Something in your life. You're going to speak out words of life, words of blessing in your home, and God's going to move something. He's going to do something. That's what He's showing me. Show me. He's specifically showing you before my eyes that as you speak those words, God's going to move in an anointing through your house. God's going to move. There's going to be a breaking in your home. I don't understand all of that, but God is going to release something in your home. Jesus, let it be. Jesus, let it be. Let it be in us, Lord. Let it be in us, Lord, this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, no longer, God, no longer. We make that resolve this morning. No longer fearful. No longer afraid. No longer, Jesus. No longer bound, God. No longer feeling, Lord, exhausted, God, to go throughout the day. No more, God. Oh, Lord, while it is day, give us the work to do, Jesus. We speak it so, Lord. We speak it so, O Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every, every darkness, every shadow in the name of Jesus, let it break, O God. Every shadow, let it break in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every darkness, every shadow, Ricky, in your home, in the name of Jesus. We speak word of life, word of anointing, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In that house, O God. Sweep through the rooms, O oh Spirit of God. Sweep through the rooms, Spirit of God. Oh Lord, I ask You, Jesus, we confess it, God. We speak it even over Ricky's home, over that house, O oh God, that there would be a trembling, a shaking of salvation like never before, O oh God. Fire of God, let it burn up all impurity, O oh Jesus. By faith, O oh God. By faith, O oh God. Oh Lord, yes, send us God. Move us, move us Lord, move us. Move us, oh God. Move us, oh God. Move us, oh God. Move us, oh Lord. Move us, oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sister Thomas, in that group, as you speak words of life, 
They'll come out, God, to that group. There's healing this week. Healing this week in that group in the name of Jesus as you speak. In the name of Jesus we speak it, God, to be. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, your provision. Yes, Lord, your guidance. Yes, Lord, your anointing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Jesus. Oh, God, as we confess and commit ourselves to you, oh, Lord, no longer afraid, Jesus. Lord, we speak life. We speak life. We speak life. We speak life. We speak life, oh, God. We speak life, Jesus. We speak prosperity over our future, God, in this, com- in this society, in this world, oh God. Oh Lord, that you are growing us in the midst of all these, these things going down. You are raising us up, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I ask you, Lord, I speak it, Jesus. Even greater education for my kids. Greater education for the children in this church, oh God. Greater than what this system has to offer. We speak greater things, oh God. Greater anointing, God. Greater manifestation of your Spirit, oh God. Let it be, Jesus, over the children of this church, God. Lord, we speak that the system of this world can only go so far. God, we speak life over them. We speak life over them. Over Mia, over Marco, over Braxton, over Miller in the name of Jesus, over Josiah, over Hannah. God, let it be over them. Let it be over them. Move them, God. Move them. Shake them, God. Fill them with your Spirit, God. Let them see the difference. Oh Lord, I ask you, Jesus. Lord, as you've been impressing on my heart, oh God, as a body, we ask you in the name of Jesus, baptize us, oh Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Baptize this church, God, those that have not experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pour your fire, O God, over each one, Lord, as we seek you. Open our mouths, O God. Fill us, Lord, with your anointing. Fill us with tongues of fire, O God, like never before. Let it be, O God, over us. Let it be, O God, over us. Yes, Lord. Lord, move us from this place. Move us from this place, O God, that we would never be the same. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as we commit ourselves to you. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, church, you need to pray this week. Spend time in the Word this week. God's going to give you vision. I believe it. God's going to speak to you. He's giving you vision. He's empowering you. This is, this is different. This is different now. We're not the same church. Not the same church. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Strength and power. Anointing of God to move in and through us this morning. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right. Let's read this verse and we'll close this. Amen. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, they enjoyed peace. They were being built up. Hallelujah. They were going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And it continued to increase. Let it be, O Lord. Let it be in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be the church. Hallelujah. Be the church. There's power inside of you. There's power inside of you this week. This is the week of anointing. There is power inside of you this week as you speak things out in the fierceness of the body of Christ. Speak things out in your house. If there's fear there, speak out against it in the name of Jesus. Stand against it and that fear will break. If there is depression, speak it out in the name of Jesus and it will break. Anxiety, speak it out in the name of Jesus. You declare it to go in Jesus' name. If there's struggle, if there's tension in relationships, speak it out in your house. In the name of Jesus, that there will be peace in this house. There will be love in this house. There will be anointing in this house. In the name of Jesus, let it be. There's healing, need deliverance, let it be. Speak it out in the name of Jesus. There's fierceness in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we step out in the power and the anointing of God. There is purpose for us. Praise God. Praise God this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo.